Very warm greetings to one and all to tonight's prayer meeting. Now let us continue to study this topic on purity. Blessed are the pure in heart. Before we go further, let us all turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for thy goodness and mercies in seeing us through the day and drawing us into thy house. We acknowledge, O God, that we are so full of sin. We have sinned against you in many ways, we are sure, in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. We only plead, O God, that you would be merciful now to cleanse us thoroughly of all our sins. O God, we know that if we regard iniquity in our hearts, you will not be in our midst. So, Lord, be merciful to show us our sins. And tonight, O God, as we continue to study about blessed are the pure in heart, may you speak mightily to every heart. Lord, open our eyes of understanding that, Lord, in understanding, we would know how to live as pure people. So be in our midst, remove all the tiredness of the body, the distraction of the minds, and Lord, draw us into thy word. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, last week, we learned a few things about blessed are the pure in heart. One of the key things is, well, what does it mean? It means to be clear, all right? Clear, to be, well, clean and unmixed. Clear from sin, all right? Unmixed with impurities of sin. And clean, right? Have being a clean vessel. That is the idea of purity. Purity. We also reminded ourselves this purity is not just an outward purity like the Pharisees had or strive to have, all right? Hence, the Lord says, blessed are the pure in heart. So it comes from the heart. The Christian must, first and foremost, be pure in the heart. It also then means that if you are pure in heart, then your externals, your actions, right, your words, your deeds, they will be pure. So no Christian can say, well, as long as my heart is pure, I have uh, sincere motives, that is good enough. Well, the Lord did say very clearly, well, make sure that your insides are clean and your outside will be clean as well. The Lord expects our external lives to also be pure, all right? So both internal and external purity. And most importantly, we remind ourselves, this purity is not morality, all right? Please remember, it's not just mere morality. Whether something is pure or not depends on God's standard, all right? So it's not what the world thinks, well, this is pure, this is good, this is clean, this is moral. But if it contradicts God's standards, God's commandments, then it is not pure. All right? So it's not a moral purity. That is the key thing that we must remember. And this is an important understanding because when we begin to learn, well, how should we be pure? How can we be pure? Now, all this um, understanding of what the Lord says will teach us what we should do, all right? So remember them first. Just understand these important definitions. Now, tonight we want to move on to the, well, what are the characteristics, characteristics, all right, of purity, someone who's pure in heart? What is it like? Well, first and foremost, we do need to settle one thing, and I don't want to take this for granted, right? Please turn to John chapter 13, John chapter 13. John 13. Right, let's read from verses 9 to 11. John 13. John chapter 13, verses 9 to 11, reading. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus saith to him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, ye are not all clean. All right? Now here we know the background. The Lord was washing the feet of the disciples, and Peter said, well, Lord, you must not wash my feet. You are the Lord. And here the Lord said to Peter, well, um, if, if I don't wash you, then you have no part of me. 
Then Peter quickly said, then wash, wash as much as possible from top to toe, all right? And then the Lord says, well, just your feet. They that have been washed need not to be washed except his feet. Now, this word clean, look at verse 10 and 11. The word clean, all right, repeated many times, clean, 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 is the same word as what we've been studying, pure, katharos, pure, all right? So this has to do with purity. Now, what is the lesson that the Lord was teaching the disciples. I do not want to take this for granted that we all understand this and we are sure of our salvation. Now, what the Lord is saying is this. They that have been washed means there is a kind of washing that do not require a repeated washing. And you know what that would be, right? That would be your, well, washing and regeneration for re new birth. Right, your salvation. So that washing is what is, well, we would, I guess, call positional purity. So if you are a saved person, right, God has washed you of all your sins, and you're immediately, by position, pure, perfectly pure to go to heaven instantly. Right? So positionally, we, true believers, have that purity, Readiness for heaven, completely clean of all sins, all right? Now, you have to ask yourself, am I truly saved, all right? And I keep saying, those who grew up in Christian families, teens, all right, pre-teens, please be sure that you are saved. Have you truly turned to Christ to ask Him to forgive you of your sins? Have you truly believed in Him as your personal Savior, not family religion? Be very sure, all right? If you're not, then tonight, turn to Him. You need that cleansing in the blood of the Saviour. That purity is what will make you fit for heaven. Now then the Lord says, well, um, they have been washed. You do not need to have that washing again except the feet. What does it mean? That means the Christian, like physically for them, all right, they walk through um, the day in the world, their feet get dirty, right? With filth, dust of the world, filth of the world. It gets unclean. So the Lord says, using this analogy to say, well, as we go through our living in this world today, right? The last few days, last few months, now we accumulate sin because we are, we still have the flesh, right? So we will fall into sin, and this is what makes us impure. This is, well, in that sense, um, progressive purity that is needed, all right? Progressive, sometimes we say positional sanctification, um, progressive sanctification. So this purity is, needs to be progressive, constantly cleaning ourselves, right? So constant progressing in purity. So here, the Lord teaches us, the Christian, when God says, um, blessed are the pure in heart, well, first and foremost, make sure that you have this position of purity. Then after you are saved, now you continue to be as pure um, as you can be, avoiding sin, making sure your life is not mixed with impurities of sin. That's an ongoing thing. Now, when the Christian, well, when you claim to be a Christian, but as you go through your daily lives um, and you find that, well, you don't really care. You just go ahead and sin. Right? Now, that's a characteristic of an uh, unsafe person. You see more of that afterwards. So, Christian, are you sure? Are you sure? Now, we are talking now about, well, the progressive, progressive purity. All right? Progressive purity. Now, let's then look at a few things that we must remember. Now, first and foremost, this progressive purity today, well, I think we can safely say it is, it is a very difficult time to be Christians, and it will get worse, all right? The Lord has said, we live, as we go through the end times, things will get worse and worse and worse. It will be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, the world today is, I think, actually people take pride in being, being um being impure, right? um, immodesty, 
um, um, crude language, right? Um, certain lifestyles are, are something that they they feel that they can be uh, they they can boast about. In fact, there's no shame in that. In terms of culture, in terms of um, everything that the world does today, it is bent or making things as corrupt, as defiled as possible in this world. Whether it is doing business, whether it's politics, um, whether it is um, even like art, right? Art today is, is very defiled. Music is equally bad, right? The kind of words, the kind of ideas in them. The world is as the world takes pride in being as impure as possible. Films, right? Movies, plays, fashion. Now, they're all designed to make men as defiled as possible. Even the things that they design for children, parents, be very aware, right? The dressing, the things that are designed are to make your child as immodest as possible so that they will grow up used to this immodesty. So it is a time where this progressive purity, blessed are the pure in heart, is something that is a huge challenge for Christians. Now last week we saw how the Lord rebuked the Pharisees. On the outside, well, you act so pure, but on the inside, it's full of defilement, corruption, filthiness. Now, as a Christian, even if you're a genuinely safe Christian, as you go through this world, you have to be very careful. Don't forget this purity is about the heart. Don't be content just by coming to church and then feeling, well, I'm going to church. Um, and if you can out, just outwardly show that so-called um, piety, well, I pray, I study God's word, I serve, um, then you're all right. The Lord says, blessed are the pure in heart. Now, if you read some of the challenges, some of the um, um, degradation of Christian living today, you begin to realize many young people, and I won't say just young people, but adults, even elderly are living lives that are truly, that can be very corrupt on the inside. But going to church, on the outward, on the outward side, everything seems fine. But the heart, the heart is full of impurity. And very often, I think, it is couched in, well, well all this, are, I can't help it, right? It is the times, everyone is like that. Some, a Christian recently said to me when I say, well, you know, we, we need to live holy lives. Um, and they say, well, the church is very conservative. Um, then I, I give some examples of how we are to live and how the New Testament people, church, uh, the New Testament believers lived. And his words were, well, you know, in those days it is possible. It's, it's, it's not possible today. It's impractical, impractical today. Not practical, right? Our time and our age, it is not possible. Now, unless we say, blessed are the pure in heart, it's only for those people living at that time, then we can accept that. But blessed are the pure in heart. I think the first characteristic then must be this. The first characteristic is, well, a desire, a genuine desire, all right? A yearning, a cry to the Lord. Lord, make me as pure, as a Christian can possibly be on this earth. That is the characteristic of the pure in heart. Lord, he will cry, he or she will cry this, will yearn for this, will plead for the Lord for this, will not be satisfied until his heart, his life shows semblance of this. Lord, please make me, help me, and I want to be as pure as a Christian, living Christian, can possibly be on earth in this age. Lord, make me such a one. Lord, whatever it takes, Lord, 
even if it means losses, even if it means chastisement, if, if, even if it means a very difficult life, I'd rather have that, Lord, if that is what it takes for me to be as pure as a living soul can be as a Christian on earth, Lord, make it happen in my life. To the point where, Lord, I am so sick and tired of my sins. Lord, deal with it. Lord, give me the strength, Lord. Change me, and I want to be changed. I will, I will do everything I can in my strength. But Lord, if not, then Lord, take me home. Lord, I'd rather die than to be a Christian on earth, on the outward, living like everything is fine to everyone and no one knows. But Lord, you know when, when I am alone, what I think about, what I do what I look at, what I listen to. Lord, I am sick of that. Lord, the outward show to men that men may not know is something that is actually very miserable to me, Lord. Lord, make me pure in heart. That is what I desire, Lord. Now, that is the characteristic of blessed other, pure, not just pure, but pure in heart. Now, those are exact words of the Apostle Paul, isn't it? Say, I press toward the mark of the high calling. We studied that. High calling is, what is the mark of your high calling? What is the final destination? What is the final target of, of your salvation, your high calling? What is it? Perfection, isn't it? Perfection in heaven. Yes, the perfection is in heaven. But Paul says, I will press towards that standard while I am on earth. That press is like a, a, a runner straining with every ounce of his energy, perspiring and stopping at nothing, and almost like to the point of um, his breath, his last breath expiring, and he's still pressing. Now, that is what it is. Lord, make me as close to what I should be when I reach heaven. Let it be so now. And I press. That is the sign of a Christian that can say in his heart, Lord, I want to be pure in heart. So that is the first characteristic. Now, there's another characteristic. Oh, before that, I must make it clear, right? Progressive sanctification, right? Progressive purity is not to maintain your salvation. Please remember that, right? The Lord already said that very clearly. Anyone who doubt, um, the idea of one saved or we saved have to, have to argue with the Lord regarding John chapter 13, all right? The Lord made it clear. If you have been washed, the Lord talk, is talking about progressive, uh, positional washing, positional purity. If you've been washed, then you do not need to be washed again, all right? That is sure. Salvation is sure. But progressive sanctification is where the Lord talks about Blessed are the pure in heart while we live on earth. All right? So please be very clear about that. Don't think that this purity is to maintain your salvation. But it is something that every Christian must aspire to. Now then we move to some other um, warnings. All right? Warnings first. Warnings. Now, like I mentioned from the beginning, Christian, we must not... Um, we must not live in a, in a self-deception, all right, that times are fine. The Christian must be so aware of how bad the environment is for us today and therefore be very watchful about purity in the heart. Now, let me read to you. If you want, you just can copy it down. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 14, all right? Second Peter chapter 2, verse 14. Now, the Lord says this. There will come a time where people will live, the people of the world, or rather from, from then till now, people of the world are like that. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery. Maybe we should turn there. Let's turn there. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 14, please. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 14. Now, we will live among people that are like that. Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 
14, read him. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised in covetous practices, cursed children. Now here, God wants us that we'll be exposed to people that are like that. Eyes having full of adultery. Now, I hope that has not rubbed off us, on us because God says these people, they will beguile unstable souls. They will deceive you. They will make you think that, well, certain lifestyle, having certain things, well, mixing impurity in your life. Well, we don't have to be so pure. There will be people that will beguile you. Well, to the point that you can become like them, having eyes full of adultery. Now, this means that you end up being a, a person, that whatever, wherever you look, whatever things you look at, whatever things you participate in, all that comes, all that, how you look at them are always mixed with adultery. Now, it can be fleshly adultery. I think that is very common today, all right? Lust of the flesh, filthiness, pornography, all right? Immodesty. Everything is linked to those things now. So, and you will become like that. Now, that is the opposite characteristic of one who says, Lord, make me as pure as possible. Lord, I hate sin. My eyes do not want to behold these things. Lord, those things, when they tell me, I get so grieved. I hate them. Or have you become deceived to the point where you want to look at these things? Having eyes full of adultery. Now, it can be adultery of the world. Covetousness, all right? He mentioned here. Covetous. Lust for the things of the world. One loving the world. Committing adultery with the world. Living like the world. That any pure living, all right, is seen as, well, old-fashioned. Is seen as too conservative. Is seen, is seen as, well, um, uh, impractical, unrealistic. Is that how we view things now? having eyes full of adultery, living like the world, lusting after things of the world. Well, that is normal, having eyes full of adultery. They say, and cannot cease from sin, right? Const a life that is, that is engaged in various kinds of, of, um, of iniquity and allowing various kinds of iniquity in your life. And having that kind of life, you say, well, you know, in our day and age, this is very good Christianity already. In fact, this is exactly what the person say. By, by many churches' standard, you know, the way we live is already very pure. Well, it has reached a stage where Christians can become, begin to feel. We cannot cease from sin. And we give the excuse that we can't help it in this age. It's impractical. Now, that's a very dangerous, contrary characteristic. Please know that. If you are a Christian, if you are a parent that feel that, well, purity is, is relative. In our age, you know, all the children dress like that in school. All the children do these kind of things in school. My colleagues live like that. My relatives who are Christians live like that. Pastors live like that. And therefore, you know, we don't have to be so pure. Now, this is the verse that describes you being deceived, beguiled, and have become an unstable soul. And you are someone now having eyes full of adultery and cannot cease from sin. Means you feel that these things in your life, these sins in your life are fine. Now, that is a very contrary characteristic. I say again, if you feel that pressing towards the mark, if you feel that, Lord, make me as pure as humanly possible in this flesh, on this earth, purge me, prune me, right? Cut me, if that is what is needed. Lord, do it. Oh, no, that kind of life is too extreme. Well, then you have become beguiled. The Lord says, blessed are the pure in heart. This purity is unmixed. This purity is very clean. Right? This purity is without impurities. Not just say these things present are fine. Now, in fact, now then, it leads me to this particular characteristic. Now, turn with me to Psalm 66, please. Psalm 66. Psalm 66, verse 18. All right. 
Psalm 66, verse 18 and, 18 and 19 reading. 18 and 19 reading. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me, but verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Now, re- look at verse 19 first. Now, this is the description of blessed are they that appear in heart, for they shall see God. They shall see God. Because here he says, now, because the psalmist said, well, he knows that he's pure in heart, he did not regard in iniquity in his heart, then God hath heard me, attended to the voice of my prayer. Remember, we studied what is see God. It's to be in God's presence. It to be seen of God is God inviting you into his presence and God said, I will see you. Right? That's why you get to see God. Right? So here, the psalmist say, well, you know, God, I have an audience with God. He attended to my cry. But look at verse 18. What is the characteristic of one that is pure in heart? This psalmist says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Then contrary, conversely, is true. Which he said in verse 19, if I, re- I do not regard iniquity in my heart, means a purity in heart. If I'm impure in heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I'm pure in heart, the Lord will hear me. The Lord will attend to my cries. The Christian must learn what is regard iniquity in my heart. This is not just an, well, I don't regard iniquity in my life. No, in my heart. Purity of the heart. What does it mean to regard iniquity? The characteristic of someone who is pure. Well, do not regard iniquity. The first thing I think we should remember is, well, you do not entertain any sin. You regard. Regard means you, you look at it, well, you, you have some respect to it. means you feel that, regard means you feel that it is something that is actually all right, even maybe admirable. And therefore, you entertain it in your life. Like I said earlier on, are you feeling the misery? Are you feeling the frustration of a life that, well, among your friends, among your, with, in front of your parents, in front of your children, your spouse, in front of your Christian um, brethren in church. Well, people think that you are quite all right. But you know, you know that frustration, that secretly, all right, you have all sorts of sin in your life. Many today, well, sadly, they don't even feel that. In their heart, they say, you know, actually, I disagree with many things that the church teaches, right? Cannot watch this, shouldn't watch this, shouldn't play with that, shouldn't go to certain things. Actually, I disagree with with all this. But they will just not say it outwardly, but they will entertain. So when they're home, they entertain all these things. When they're with their friends, they entertain all these things. So they watch certain things, they listen to certain kind of uh, music, right? they go to certain places with their friends, they just keep it from other Christians. But these are things, they feel that, well, they are not sinful. They are not. So I let them in my life. Under the, uh, maybe to ease the self-conscience, all right? To ease conscience. I say, these are fine. These are all right. Dressing like the world, you know, um, immodestly and all that, looking like um, um, rock musicians, rappers, um, that kind of, well, it's fine. What's wrong? They say this is just entertainment. That's all. It's just entertainment. There is nothing, nothing serious about it. Now, remember the definition of pure. Pure means without impurity. Whether you, f- you feel and think that it's just entertainment, as long as this is not clean, blessed are the pure in heart means you do not entertain these things in your heart. You do not let them in your life. Which is why I keep reminding us that the definition of this, this word is very important. It's, it's, it's what the medical world uses um, um, from this Greek word, all right? Cathartic. It is to expel 
remove, push out things that are um, impure in the body, to get rid of them. It is not to let them lurk in the, the body system. Cathartic to them is purge them, right? Expectorate them, spew them out. So, Christian, when you entertain these things, if you ask and say, do you think that this is sin? Yeah, yeah, I know it's sin. That all the cursing and swearing, all the, in, all the lifestyle that are um, wrong, adultery, cohabitation, all that kind of thing. We are promoting um, things of darkness, but it's just entertainment. Well, you have regarded iniquity in your heart because God, you know as a Christian, those are unclean. All right, so that's the first thing. If you feel that, well... Um, I agree these things are sinful, but it's just for fun and I don't take them seriously. You know, I only look at the good parts and all that. No one goes to the doctor and says, please get rid of this, this, uh, this, this, prob this bacteria in my stomach. But, you know, certain ones, I'm fine with them in there. I say, get rid of all oh, this bacteria, any bacteria that's causing me right, to have this diarrhea or this vomiting. Can you please have something that will get rid of it, right? So, regard, that's the first one, you entertain. Well, what else about regard? Um, well, it's a similar idea, you ignore. You ignore, all right? Means you feel that, you look at this thing and actually you feel that it might be quite good for your life. So, you just ignore dealing with it. Well, maybe it might be helpful to me. Well, you just simply say, well, never mind. Never mind. Now, what else about ignore? Uh, what, el what else about, about regard? Now, this, rega this part of regard is one of the worst, right? And that is, you cherish and you indulge. Regarding iniquity in the heart, someone who is pure in the heart will not cherish, will not indulge in these things. Will not cherish, will not indulge. Now, put a, a bookmark here, but can we turn to Proverbs 26, verse 11? Proverbs 26, verse 11. Proverbs 26, verse 11. Now, Christian, every time we feel that, well, you know, we regard iniquity in how it's all right, it's a little bit. Proverbs 26, 11, we should remember this verse. Shall we read Proverbs 26, verse 11 together? As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Let's read one more time. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Now, when I used to have dogs in my house, it's something that puzzled me when I was a kid. Why is it that the dog vomits? All right, then after some time, the dog goes back to it, sniffs, sniffs his own vomit, and eats its own vomit. It was very gross to me. All right? Then after I became a Christian, well, I began to look at this verse and realize, right? yes, it is very disgusting for us after we have been washed in positional um, purity to return to our old sins, to return to the Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, whatever it is, your so-called um, pet, pet sin that you love. Every time you are tempted to, and every time you fall into that, well, well we lap up, right? We eat up that sin. We indulge in it. We even cherish it. Though no one knows, no one sees. But God says, you know, vomit is very smelly, right? Full of dirty, filthy bacteria and all sorts of filthiness. Well, God's description is very apt for us to remember. The pure in heart, well, would not return to his vomit. Every time you think of the sin that you love, think, remember those are like the dog vomit. As a fool returneth to his folly, returning to the foolishness of our old ways. So Christian, when... 
we say, am I pure in heart? Then we have to ask, are there still these pet sins in our life that we cherish, right? And that we give ourselves the permission to indulge in. Well, I've worked very hard during the day, all right, when I go home. Y yes, I know these kind of things, they, whether it's movies, whether it is music, whether it is um, some, some, um, some games or what, but you know that in them are impurities, unclean things. Will you still indulge in them? Well, the pure in heart will say, I've, I hate this, all right? You know, it's the most miserable thing for a Christian, a safe Christian, to live an outwardly um, holy life to many. But you know that misery, all right? Of this struggle, of this impurity. Well, the Bible also reminds us, all right, um, Second Peter, I'll read to you. Second Peter two fourteen. Peter quotes this: having eyes, uh, sorry, um, in Second Peter two twenty four. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb: the dog is is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. The soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Right? It's a pig. A pig loves all this dirtiness. You bathe the pig; it's been washed. And then you run back to the mud into the field, and wallow in it means it rolls around in it, right? So God describes all these horrible, horrible, terrible behaviors. The unbelievers, all right, will behave like that. But why would the believer, after being washed, right, return to the vomit and roll around in the filthiness of the flesh again? Now, teens and adults alike, look at everything in your life, as we study this, um, this beatitude, purity in the heart. Pure means without uncleanness, without impurity. Clear means you look at it, it's clear, all right? It's like water. It's not muddied. You and I must be very, very honest in our life. Is my, is my life clear or is it muddied? Muddy waters, all right? There are things that stirs up that it gets stirred up in there with impurities. When God looks at my life, is it clear of these things? Or we let these things go on in our life, we indulge in them, we entertain them, we even cherish them. That is not purity, all right? And because we live in such a horrible age, do not give yourself the excuse that, well, this is much better than other Christians already. The cry of the pure in heart is, Lord, make me as pure as I can possibly be, as any human can possibly be. All right? Now, then the last one about the well, characteristic of a pure in heart. Let's turn to Romans chapter 13, the last characteristic that we will consider. Romans chapter 13. Let's read verses 13 um, to 14 together. Romans um, 13. Actually, let's read from verse 12 to 14. Romans 13, verses 12 to 14 reading. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now here again is the reminder. We have been washed. We are brought into the light. Now, now walk purely, walk honestly, walk truthfully. There is no mixture in your life anymore. Not in wantonness, um, not in rioting, right? And drunkenness, partying, right? Um, then in wantonness, just however you wish, whatever you, your heart's desires. You don't watch this, just watch. You want to go there, just go. You want to listen to this, just listen. You want to take that job, just take. You want to whatever, just, just whatever fulfills your 
heart's desire, without control, wantonness, not in strife and in envying. Now, these are, these are sinful things. But then it says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof, the impurity, to fulfill, to entertain, to give regard to, to cherish, to indulge in whatever your flesh lusts after that is sinful, right? that is mixed with impurity. Well, the one who is pure in the heart will not make provision for the flesh. Will not make provision for the flesh. That is one of the characteristics of the pure in heart. That is what we must cry to the Lord for strength to do. Make no provision for the flesh. Regard iniquity is the opposite. Right? Well, tonight when I go back, I'm going to watch this, I'm going to do that. Well, tomorrow, you know, I'm going to, this weekend, I'm going to, well, these things, no one knows about it, but I'm just going to indulge in them. Yeah, I know that they're not good. I know these things are causing me to backslide. I know these things are making me love the world more and more. In fact, I know some of these things are just outright sinful. The things that are, that are there. Well, God says, make no provision for the flesh. It means you know that this thing will cause impurity in your life. You make no provision. You will not let that thing be present in your life. You know it is there, you get rid of it. it you, you won't let it be present before you anymore. Now, some make provision by, as we study later on, through certain friendships. You know, certain friendships... Um, are not good for you. And, you know, you talk about certain things, you just go crazy with them. You make provision, you maintain those friendships instead of ending them. Certain entertainment, certain um, things in your life, you know that they are making your life unclear, muddled. But you yet, you make provision for them. You allow them to exist. All right? So, as we study more, we will see how we make provision for the flesh, how do we avoid, how do we become more pure? But these are some characteristics and the opposite of it that a pure in the heart person would possess. All right, let us turn to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, search our hearts. Though men may not know, even our closest of kin may not know, but thou knowest whether we are pure in heart. Thou knowest our struggles. O oh Lord, forbid that they are in us. The regarding of iniquity in delighting, in cherishing, indulging, Lord, in things that we ought not to have in our lives, making provisions for them even. O oh, forbid, O oh God, that any of us would not deal with it quickly. Lord, we want to be pure in heart. And Father, we pray that we will be deeply impressed that unless we have this purity of heart, oh, we will not see you. We will not know that closeness. We will not know that fellowship. We will not have the assurance of you attending to our cries. So, Lord, awaken our souls. If there be any of us that have gone back to our vomit, gone back to, oh, tumbling and rolling around in the mire, in the fields, though man may not see what is in us, oh, awaken our souls and grant us the strength, O oh Lord, as we press towards the mark of all oh, perfection, pure perfection, as best as we can, by your grace. Lord, make us as holy as a human can possibly be on earth. That is our cry. Meet with us in the place of prayer, for we can do nothing without you. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.